So fans have been wondering what Nintendo's next console will be like for a long time now, but as of the last few weeks, all those speculations, theories, and whatnot have really reached a boiling point, as the biggest announcement of the most recent Nintendo Direct was Side Order. And don't get me wrong, Side Order looks great and I'll definitely be playing it, but there's a couple things of note here. One, this wasn't an announcement of something new. We already knew Side Order was coming, and we just got more details for it. Two, while Side Order looks awesome, keep in mind it's just DLC for Splatoon 3. It was the biggest announcement of the Direct that wasn't a remake, and it was for DLC. Leaving us with a Direct that didn't have much substance and was built off announcing remakes. Many people have taken this as a sign that Nintendo is gearing up for its next console, so major Switch announcements will naturally slow down and may soon stop altogether. But if that's the case, the question has to be asked, what will Nintendo's next console be like? The PS5 and Xbox Series X have been out for a while now, so Nintendo's had plenty of time to study them and figure out how they can compete. Hell, as I'm writing this, more and more reports and articles are coming out about Nintendo supposedly showing off their new console behind closed doors, so if that's the case, an announcement is probably coming soon. So with everything that's going on, what exactly will this new console be like? While I can't definitively answer that, after analyzing the Switch's current position in the game industry, I came up with four things that the so-called Switch 2 needs if it wants to make the biggest splash possible. Now that Nintendo introduced this way to play, they need to stick with it. Otherwise people will ask, well why can't I play it on the go? I could with the Switch. It's the same reason why if they make more Smash Brothers games, they can never cut any fighters again. Otherwise everyone would say Ultimate is better since it brought back every previous fighter. So why would any future games cut any? You know what I mean? This is something they need to commit to. The hybrid model is what gave the Switch the leverage it did when it came out. Imagine if Nintendo released a conventional console in 2017. At that point, the PS4 and Xbox One had already been well established, and Nintendo needed to recover from the massive underperformance of the Wii U. Any conventional console would have been completely wiped out, because why would gamers buy a new console when they already had a PS4 or Xbox One? Nintendo realized they had to do something new in order for the Switch to succeed, and the hybrid model was just what the gaming world needed. And on top of that, the Switch still has this one-up over the PS5 and Series X, so imagine what a more powerful console with this feature could do. A hybrid console that has the ability to run some of the more powerful games in the industry has the ability to rock the gaming world in a way that no one thought possible. This segment shouldn't come as a surprise to people, as it's something that Nintendo has been endlessly mocked online for. But yes, the next Nintendo console desperately needs legacy content. Just make games from previous consoles available to buy this one. It's not that hard of a formula to figure out. The structure for legacy content that the Switch has is asinine. Sometimes they'll re-release a previous game, advertising it as a remake, but it doesn't seem more than just an HD upscale. So if you're gonna re-release the same game, why can't you just do it from the start? Is it that hard? But of course, that's not what you were thinking when it comes to bad legacy content, were you? Nah, let's talk about the Switch Online and all the crap with that. The Switch Online membership does offer legacy content, offering NES, SNES, and N64 games, among others. And while there's certainly a good time to be had with the games offered, the problem comes with how they update the roster. I don't know why, but for some reason they continuously decide to update the game list with the most obscure titles that no one asked for. Oh boy, I can't wait to play Claymates on my Switch. I don't know why they keep doing this when there are obvious games that people want to play instead of the ones offered. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out that people would rather have Donkey Kong 64 than Pilot Wing 64. So yeah, enough complaining. Just make legacy content available, and don't make fans wait months for something they didn't ask for. It can't be that hard.
Now this point kind of contradicts Nintendo's whole philosophy when it comes to developing systems, but they should definitely put at least some emphasis on advancing the hardware. Now yes, obviously Nintendo is going to make a more powerful console, it would be completely pointless to release a new console only for it to be weaker, I just think they should focus a bit more on hardware advancement than they did with the Switch. When it came to the Switch, hardware power took a complete backseat to console innovation, and I fully expect that to be the case here, but it's just, come on man, have you seen the new Mortal Kombat graphics? Now I don't expect or even want Nintendo to solely focus on hardware advancement, but I do want them to be aware that in this category, they're really falling behind. This new console doesn't need to be as powerful as a PS5 or Series X, but Nintendo needs to prove they can at least compete with them if they don't want to get left in the dust. Even if this new console is totally innovative, players still might be hesitant to buy it if the power just isn't there. Besides, if Nintendo can make games like Tears of the Kingdom with the limited hardware of the Switch, imagine what they could do with a console that's at least as powerful as a PS4 Pro. While my last point contradicted Nintendo's philosophy of making consoles, this one plays right into it, and that's the fact that Nintendo's gotta do something new with their next console. What this new thing is, I obviously can't be sure of. I don't know it could be crazier than the Switch's already crazy model, but knowing Nintendo, I'm sure they'll figure something out. While the Switch's model is great, this new console needs to have some sort of zing factor to not only be able to compete with Microsoft and Sony, but also to not have fans think, oh this is just a more powerful Switch. Nintendo clearly knew this before they launched the Switch, so they should definitely know it now. I definitely have confidence that Nintendo will follow through with this one, because as I've already said, ever since the Wii, their top priority with console development has been innovation. Even the Wii U, for all of its faults, was still trying to do something new, just had poor execution, which the Switch later picked up the slack for. And for this new console, whatever surprises it may hold, I hope it will be able to do what the Switch did and then some. So what do you think? Am I asking for too much? Too little? What do you want this next console to have, and do you think Nintendo can pull it off? Either way, the gaming world is holding their breath, Nintendo, so you'd better know where you stand and what you have to do.